Okay, so our first speaker of the late afternoon session is uh, Chen Park, and we'll be talking about 2D superconformal field theory from empty brains. Thank you for the introduction, and let me first thank the organizers for uh, an opportunity to present a talk at this wonderful workshop, and also thank you for coming to this talk. So uh, today's talk is based on the work with Kentaro Hori and Yuji Tachikawa, which will appear in the archive in the near future. And this talk, in this talk, I will describe a claim, our claim that uh, to the n equals two comma two uh, theory coming out of a certain M theory brain configuration is equivalent to uh, to the n equals two superconformal field theory described by a cause and model of Kazama and Suzuki. So here is the outline of today's talk. So first I'll review how to construct a spectral network that will be used to describe the 2D BPS spectrum of our interest. And then I will uh, describe the brain configuration that will give us the 2D uh, n equals two comma two theory and also how this brain configuration plus the spectral network uh, can give us the uh, 2D BPS spectrum. And also I'll describe what our claim is. And in the third part of the talk, I will use the spectral network to find out the 2D BPS spectrum for the 2D theory out of that brain configuration and use it a piece of evidence for our claim. So, Let's start with building spectral network. So one convenient physical picture to have in mind when we consider 4D n equals to theory and spectral network is that considering M5 brain uh, wrapping a cyborgton curve described by, for example, this fxy, and uh, the low energy effective theory of that M5 brain will give us a 4D n equals to theory, and then the BPS state and a BPS state of the 2D, a BPS state of the 4D theory will be given by an M2 brain whose boundaries, whose boundary runs along the cyborgton curve. And when you consider the cyborgton curve as a multi-sheeted cover over a punctured, for example, human surface, which is coordinatized by X, then those that boundary of an M2 brain will be projected onto the base space as a one-dimensional curve, which follows the differential equation given by the cyborgton, I mean, difference of the cyborgton differential. So here, lambda j is the value of the cyborgton differential on the jth sheet among the multi-covered, uh, multi-sheeted cover, and tau is the real parameter along the uh, boundary or projected boundary. So this is how Clem, Lurch, Meyer, Bafa, and Warner first described the way of finding 4D BPS state in the 4D n equals the theory. And Gayoto, Moore, and Naisky extended this construction and introduced S walls and spectral networks. So an S wall is Again, a real one-dimensional curve on the base space that follows this differential equation. And a collection of those S walls at a fixed value of theta is called a spectral network. So here is one more ingredient to construct a spectral network in addition to what Andy described wonderfully this morning. So when we have a branch point of index n, by which I mean the point where n sheets of M5 brains meeting at a point, around the branch point, it is quite easy to solve this differential equation. We can solve it analytically. And at the end of the day, what we get is n squared minus 1 s walls coming out of the branch point. So n equals two case is the simplest one. And as we collide more and more branch points to make a single branch point of larger index, we get this S wall configuration around the branch point. Uh, and as we change the value of theta, which is in this differential equation, this whole spectral network will rotate by a fraction of one revolution. And on the lower left corner 
here is a three-dimensional representation of the two-sheeted cover and three S walls coming out of index two branch point, which corresponds to the upper left corner. So here, so an S wall starts at a branch point, and it follows a path determined by the differential equation given by the Snipleton differential. And at some point, when two S walls meet at a point, and if the order of indices for those S walls are right, then we can have a third S wall coming out of the joint. So in this case, we have two branch points of index two. Each of the branch point has three S walls coming out of it. So let's say the top one is branch point two, three, and the lower one is the branch point one, two. Then because the order is right, there can be one, three S wall coming out of the joint of one, two S wall and two, three S wall. And on the right, again, it's a three dimensional representation of the three sheeted cover over this base space. And also I represented three S walls and one joint. So basically, to construct a spectral network, we start drawing each S wall from a branch point. We evolve it according to the differential equation. And as they form a joint, we put an additional S wall from the joint. And then we evolve all S walls until, in general, it, they flow to punctures. So this is a writing review of the construction of spectral network. And let's see what is the brain configuration that will give us the 2D theory of our interest. And here it is. So we will consider the brain configuration shown on the right. We have one M5 brain, which is wrapping a cyberwitting curve described by a polynomial in terms of T and V. And we have a flat M5 brain, which we denote as M5 prime, which is fixed at t equals t0 and spans the whole V space. And there will be multiple M2 brains connecting those two M5 brains. So a flat M2 brain will correspond to a ground state of the 2D n equals 2, 2 theory. And you can imagine there can be an interpolating M2 brain between, those, between these two flat M2 brains. And that will give us a BPS state of the 2D theory. And when we move the endpoint of M2 brain, for example, in this case, the endpoint will be at t equals t0. And if we move the endpoint to the ramification point where these multiple sheets of M5 brains meet, then you can imagine that the BPS soliton interpolating two flat M2 brains will be massless because each area in this space will be vanished. So how can we uh, find out the 2D BPS spectrum of, this, of the 2D theory coming out of this configuration? So first, we construct a spectral network corresponding to the cyberwitting curve here, I mean, the cyberwitting curve that M5 range wrap. And let's say we drew it on the base space like this. And here, the black dot is the end point of this, these M2 brains projected onto the base space. In this case, the base space is the T-plane. And uh, again, a dot here is a flat M2 brain. So each dot will correspond to a ground state M2 brain. But uh, so. When we have multiple M2 brains ending on the curve, they will have the same T value, but have different V values. And each value of Vj will correspond to the J's ground state. But if we project all the endpoint onto the T plane, is just one point at T equals T0. That's the ground state M2 brain. And the uh, uh, 2dBP state is obtained by uh, finding the configuration where a uh, finite S wall is formed between a branch point and that end point. So as I said earlier, when we change the value of theta, the spectral network rotates. 
like this. And there is an instance where uh, an S wall goes through the projected endpoint. And that is exactly when we have a BPS soliton in the 2D theory. For example, if this uh, S wall connecting the branch point and the endpoint is S12, we will have a soliton interpolating the ground, first ground state and the second ground state. And the central charge of the 2D state can be obtained by integrating the difference of the cyboutine differential whose, indi whose indices can be read out from the indices of the corresponding S wall. So for example, in this case, if we have a finite S1 to wall, then the cyboutine differential that we have to integrate should be lambda 1, 2. And we can obtain the central charge by just reading out the value of the integration. So here, and so far, it is about some reviews of the brain configuration and the corresponding spectral network. And let's, let me present the claim. So the claim is the 2D theory from multiple M2 brains uh, between the flat M5 prime and the M5 brain wrapping a cyboton curve where the cyboton curve is described by this uh, polynomial. And we will call this MNK, where N is the number of sheets, M5, sheets of M5 brains, and the K is the number of M2 brains. This is equivalent to a 2D N equals 2 comma 2 lambda Gizmo model with K chiral fields and with a superpotential whose functional form is determined by the cyboton curve and we'll call this LG and K. And for the cyboton curve, in general, when mu j have general values, then there will be n minus 1 index 2 branch points on the uh, t plane. But when we set all mu j to 0, then these branch points will collide into each other. And at the end point of the m2 brain, and there they will form an index n branch point. So the figure would be these M2 brains uh, coincide and ending exactly at the ramification point of M5 range where N sheets of M5 brains meet. And from the lambda Ginzburg model's point of view, setting all mu j to 0 is flowing the 2D theory into its IL fixed point. And in the I a fixed point of the lambda Gizmo model is expected to be described by an n equals 2 superconformal theory, which is described by this coset. This is found first by Kazama and Suzuki. So let's call it KS and K. So the case of single M2 brain, MN and K equals 1, reduces to uh, KS n, 1. And this is nothing but the AN minimum model superconformal field theory, which is the IR limit of the lambda Gizmo model with this simple uh, superpotential. And this is a special case, in some sense, of our claim. And this mu j, which describes the locations of the branch points, uh, from the viewpoint of lambda Gizmo model, they are relevant perturbations from the IL fixed point where the Kazama Suzuki Kosei model is. And each uh, mu j has this scaling dimension. So let's first do some basic checks about this claim. First, we can consider the number of ground states on each, si each 2D theory. For the 2D theory coming from the brain configuration, there are and choose k number of ground states because of the S rule, where here S rule means that there can be only single M2 brain connecting the flat M5 prime and the M5, one sheet of M5 brain wrapping the cyberwitten curve. And the Witten index of the Kazamaski model is calculated to be N choose k, so they match. There is another non trivial thing in the brain configuration, which is k going to N minus k duality. And on the brain configuration side, this is due to the hanani witten transition. And you can consider pushing the M5 prime across the 
uh, ramified system of M5 brains. And during the process, when the M5, M5 prime brain goes across the system of M5 brains, K M2 brains will annihilate it, and N minus K brains, M2 brains will be created. And that is why we expect K going to N minus K duality. And from the coset model's point of view, well, the K going to N minus K duality is trivial because of the form of the coset. So this, these are two basic checks. But today, I want to present another evidence, which is relatively non-trivial compared to these two. And that is, we'll match the BPS spectrum of the brain configuration, where we turn off all the mu j parameters except mu n. So if we choose these parameters, then the brain configuration will be 1 branch point of index n, but it's not at the end point of the m2 brain, but is away from the m2 brain end point by mu sub n. And the corresponding uh, lambda gizmo model will be uh, deformation from its IL fixed point by the most relevant term mu n times the chiral field x1. So we'll do this by using the spectral network, but let me first summarize. And it's shaking. Uh, uh, let me summarize the result, what we will get from the uh, spectral network analysis. So the ground states of the 2D theory from the uh, brain configuration can be described as weights of k extreme power of the fundamental representation of SUN. Here n is again the number of sheets, and k is the number of m2 brains. And the solitons, the BPS states of the 2D theory, uh, correspond to roots connecting the weights. And in order to read out the central charge, we project this weight space onto a complex plane. Then that will be our W plane. And this is exactly the same structure that is expected to describe the BPS spectrum of the deformed landau gizmo model. So, it's time to see some pretty figures. So let's consider the case when we have three M5 brains wrapping a Riemann sphere with an irregular puncture at the infinity. And let's turn on mu2 and mu3 to be a general value, to be general values. And then we'll have two branch points of index 2. Each, from each branch point, there'll be three s walls coming out of it. And as I said before, to read out the 2D BPS spectrum, we change the value of theta, thereby rotating the whole spectral network like this. And for the value of theta, where an S will connect the branch point and the end point of the M2 brain, there will be a 2D BPS state. So here we have one, two, three BPS states that have the uh, phase of the central charge between 0 and pi. And there will be, uh, well, for example, if there is an SIJ wall connecting the branch point and the end point of the M2 brain between when the value of theta is between 0 and pi. When at the value of theta plus pi, there will be SJI wall connecting the branch point and the end point of the M2 brain. So there will be six BPS states in this case. And well, if we turn off the mu2 to be 0, which is what we will compare to the deformed landau gizmo model, the two branch points approach each other like this. And when we set m2 to 0, then there's only one branch point of index 3. And it is away from the end point of the m2 brain by mu3. Again, we can rotate the spectral network and read out the 2 dB per spectrum. And it is described on the right of this slide. So here, let's first see the, right, the diagram on the right as a V plane then each dot represents the end point of a flat M2 brain. So each will be ground state number 1, 2, 3. And we can uh, calculate the central charge of the soliton interpolating two ground states, which can be calculated by integrating the cyborg differential. And it is given by the difference of the value of V for the two ground states. So you can identify this as the W plane, which goes nicely with the fact that the 2D theory 
will be equivalent to the lambda Gizmo model. So, and you can easily see that the ground state, ground states form the fundamental representation of SU2, SU3, and the solitons are given by roots connecting the weights. And when we have uh, more than one M2 brain, then as I said before, there is an astral. So for example, two M2 brains cannot end on the same spot, like two dots cannot be at number one ground state, number one ground state. So uh, there will be only three ground states in this case, one, two, one, three, and two, three. And here I have shown the soliton interpolating one, three ground state to one, two ground state. And you can see that the K equals two soliton will be, uh, we can get the K equals two soliton from the K equals one soliton because here uh, the soliton is given by the K equals one soliton interpolating the second ground state and the third ground state. And we can do this exercise and again summarize the result as shown on the right. And you can easily identify the BPA spectrum of the uh, two, two, the, uh, two cases which demonstrates the k going to n minus k duality. In this case, k is 1 and is 3, so k equals 1 and k equals 2 k's should be equivalent. And this can be understood in a different way as the fact from the Lie group that Lie algebra that the uh, second exterior power of the fundamental representation of SU3 is equivalent to the uh, uh, anti fundamental representation of SU2. And we can go further. For example, we can consider four M5 range wrapping the Riemann surface. We will have 15. When we only turn on mu4 and turn off mu2 and mu3, we will have a single branch point of index 4 from which 15 S walls are coming out. We can repeat the exercise and we can read out the 2 dBP spectrum, which is demonstrated in the middle. And this can also be nicely described by the weights of the fundamental representation of SU4 and the roots connecting the weights. And to read out the central charge, we again project, we project the weight space onto a complex plane, which will be our W plane. And when we have more than one M2 brain, then we do the same exercise as we have done for the case of N equals 3, K equals 2. And uh, on the left, there is the 2 dBP spectrum. And again, this can be nicely understood as projecting the uh, weight of the second exterior power of the fundamental representation of SU4 onto a complex plane. And again, the solitons are given by the roots connecting connecting two weights. And one thing that is non-trivial is that not every two weights, not every two ground states are connected by a soliton. Only, well, there is only, there is a soliton only when the two ground states are connected by a root. For example, there is no uh, soliton connecting this ground state and this ground state. So that is one nice feature. And again, k going to n minus k duality can be understood as the identity in the representation of SU4. And for the k equals 3, it's like 3 m2 brains occupying 4 spots. So you can easily understand that it should be equivalent to the case of k equals 1. And it, it is indeed the case. Again, the k going to n minus k duality goes nicely with, the, with this fact of the, the algebra of SU4. So this is the description of how we can get the 2D BPS spectrum. So let me summarize. So here the claim was uh, 2D n equals 2 comma 2 theory from multiple M2 brains between a flat M5 brain and a ramified system of an M5 brains wrapping a Riemann surface can be identified with the lambda Gisbo theory that flows in the IR to an n equals two supercomposite theory described by a cosmic model by Kazama and Sivki. And as one of the main pieces of evidence, I described how we can obtain the BPS spectrum of the 2D theory from the brain configuration. And the result matches nicely with the 2D BPS spectrum of the lambda gizmo model. And well, 
this, there is another story regarding the calculation of S2 partition functions for these 2D theories, but well, let me just defer the explanation to the upcoming paper. And there are other cosine models, so it would be interesting if we can generalize this story to those cosine models. And also, this 2D cosine models from conform field theory appears as a 2D dual CFT of the supersymmetric higher spin theory in anti ADS3 space. So it would be nice if you can find some connection. And I have little thing to, I mean, I have, I don't have anything to say, anything concrete to say, but well, it would be nice if you can understand this 2D theory as a boundary theory of M2 brains. And this is the end of the time. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so, uh, If there are no more questions, let's thank Chai again.